morning guys we're deep in the heart of bourbon country uh, today we're gonna go out and uh, hit the bourbon trail and uh, sample a little bit of what uh, this region has to offer right yeah and, and uh, learn the history and see the sites I mean, we've been here less than 24 hours and we're just having a great time it's it is great to be with um, old friends and and we've met new friends and the innkeeper and other guests and Lots of, lots of tail swapping. Yes, and the only downside today is the spider, which is parked behind us, is not going to be moving for the next couple days because we're going to be in a SUV that went off over here. Uh, you're right, uh, our left, and uh, we're going to be in the back seat singing. <laughs> <laughs> we are John and Miriam. We may live along the Virginia coast, but for the next few months, we will again call the road our home. We plan to ride our Can-Am Spider to the Pacific Coast and back, over 7,000 miles through 16 states. We are calling this trip a lap around America. We know this odyssey will offer up its full survey of adventure, scenic beauty, along with the standard dose of challenges. But that's what we signed up for. In this part of the world, there are many large black warehouse looking structures like this, and these are barrel houses. They store bourbon. And we were told yesterday the reason that they're black is because it blends in to the topography of this area. In the area where they have distilleries, there, there is a special kind of mold that grows on trees to turn into trees very dark brown or black and it just helps blend in. We didn't know this, I thought that was pretty cool. You'll notice behind us here the, uh, the buildings are white but the mold, uh, the distiller's mold is starting to take root on these buildings at the ground and starting to work their way up the sides of the building which uh, is normal for this area. It's kind of cool. Miriam, smile. I'm in Bourbon is still made today as it was made over a hundred years ago. First they start with mixing the grains and then ferment it for up to three days. Then the mash goes into the still. The pot still is still made from copper. Copper has antimicrobial qualities to produce a higher quality product. Although not required, almost all distilleries use copper stills. The end product at this point is as clear as water. Then it is added to new charred American white oak cast and put in storage. So bourbon actually has a very colorful history. It started out with a young man named Elijah Craig. Elijah Craig was a Baptist minister uh, working and living in Virginia. Uh, they kicked him out because Baptists were frowned upon in Virginia. And so he came to Kentucky and made liquor. Liquor is basically distilled grain products. They let the grain ferment and you distill it and you drink it. It's commonly referred to as white lightning or uh, it was unaged product. Well, he had a request to send some down to New Orleans from uh, his home here in Kentucky. And the only way he had to transport it was in a barrel, but the only barrel he had had, had other stuff stored in it. And this is the best conjecture, the best story they think is probably the truth, but there's no actual written evidence. So this is the accepted, one of the accepted versions. So he cleaned the barrel out by burning the inside to get rid of the taste uh, of what was in there before. Lord knows what was in there before. 
and send it down to New Orleans. Well, it took months to get it down there because it had to be uh, on the back of a uh, wagon to get to the river. And then from there, it had to take the, uh, the uh, river boat down to New Orleans. And by the time it got there, it had turned brown. And it was very popular. Uh, nobody had ever seen this before. Uh, the, the charcoal from the oak barrel that had been uh, toasted caused the, the uh, liquor to turn brown, which we now refer to as what is now bourbon. Now, the only thing they had to identify this product uh, from is uh, that they know who made it and the place where it came from. It came from the county of Bourbon, Kentucky. So, Bourbon County, it got synonymous with the beverage bourbon. Most people don't realize this, but bourbon actually, although bourbon is whiskey, not all whiskey is bourbon. To be bourbon, it must be at least 51% corn, and other malted grains can be added to it, and it must be then placed into a new white oak cask, uh, and casks are still handmade today. Uh, then they're aged for at least four years, and it must be charred, the cask must be charred, and that gives it its uh, its brown hue and the, the taste that we've all come to love. If you add any chemical agent of any kind, any preservative, uh, any flavor additive, it is illegal uh, to then call it bourbon. So, and it has the uh, flavor profiles and nuances that are synonymous with uh, fine wines. So, as you begin to study and taste bourbon, you realize it's really a very uh, uh, full-bodied beverage with a lot of good flavor to it. All distillers provide tours with sampling, but only one provided actual sampling from the barrel in the barrel house at barrel strength. For me, a dream come true. To say that I'm than that, happy um, would be an understatement. Yeah. Yeah. Drinking yeah. whiskey yeah. from the barrel in the barrel you know, house. At barrel strength. It definitely has that too, but it's, it's got a good taste. Ah. Not every single one. So I was in error in the storage capacity for these rick houses. Yeah. The, uh, like six times larger than. The smallest ones, which is right there, will hold 35,000 plus, and the biggest ones in the back will hold uh, about 56,000 barrels. On property, they can store half a million barrels of whiskey. So we're here at our B&B, &B, not an Airbnb, B&B, &B, which basically means full service from the host. And I'm gonna take an opportunity to introduce you to our host. And by the way, it is Derby Day here in uh, Kentucky, the Kentucky Derby. And so this young lady has been to the Derby many times in her life, but I did wanna get a chance to introduce you and the chance to plug her B&B &B in the heart of bourbon country. Okay, tell us, Tell us about yourself and your uh, your home here. Hi, um, I'm Lisa Murray. I own the Hill House Bed and Breakfast here in Loretta, Kentucky. We are three miles from Maker's Mark Distillery on the Kentucky Bourbon Trail. So we have four bedrooms that we'd like to offer to our guests. Um, John and um, uh, Miriam uh -huh. have been here uh, for three nights now going on. So we've enjoyed having them and um, I just love meeting new people, uh, hosting them for the bourbon trail, making sure their bellies are full before they go out and drink a lot of bourbon and get that Kentucky hug, so, <laughs> which is vital. You can't go to the bourbon trail without the Kentucky hug. Um, today happens to be the Kentucky Derby uh, 2022, and I got my little derby pin on and a little bit of a mint julep. So, cheers to the Kentucky Derby and cheers to Kentucky in general. In case you don't know what the Kentucky Hug is, I'm not going to spoil it for you. You've got to come here and go to some distilleries and you will learn. You'll get an intimate Kentucky Hug. Well, what are your thoughts about our time in uh, 
in bourbon country. Oh my gosh, there's been so much to learn. Yes.